Okay, so once again, I'm going to apologize to you for running through this so fast. There is a lot of um, detail in it, and unfortunately, it's just the time constraint doesn't allow me to really show you each and every, you know, step as it dries and everything. So now I'm just adding in a little bit of my Kiwi Kiss, which is last um, last year's in color, and I'm just adding it into the leaves and. Uh, Again, I'm using my very small little store-bought brush because it has that nice delicate tip which allows me to get a finer detail. Now you really really have to have patience to let this dry in between in between the coats because um, otherwise <laughs> it really does not look as good. Okay so I've done the little leaves over there. I'm going to clean off my brush and I'm going to go back to my flower and I'm going to add just a touch of real red and I just want that for the very center area to add an extra little bit of darkness a little bit wetter than I want okay and I'm adding a little bit to there just like little dots of it it's such a tiny image that you really can only add so much detail as far as the shading goes and then I'm going to add a little bit of more depth to the little scarf over there okay and for my last part I'm going to go in with a little bit of old olive for the leaves as you can tell I'm not really doing super blending here I really wanted it to be a much uh, more choppy free look rather than the really blended um, blended watercolor that you can do this one's a much kind of freer looking watercolor I'm not re-wetting all the areas I'm allowing some of that waterline to show in this case it's so tiny that it actually has a nice effect whereas if you have a really large area the watermark does not look good okay so I've already colored in my leaves I'm happy with how they look I'm going to now go back to the hair as you notice the hair is really it didn't show up it didn't stamp out well just because the watercolor paper is rough so I'm going to go in with my stamp and write black marker so I'm going to turn this upside down to work it's a little easier for me and I'm going to trace out her hairline okay and I'm going to kind of color that in as well as add a little bit more darkness to her eyes okay and I'm going to go with my brush and just lightly wet it and blend out that black okay there and that just adds back what was taken away from stamping on this paper same with, with the eye there okay so she looks her eyes and hair look a little more defined now She's starting to look really pretty um, there's just one more thing I want to add and that is I'm going to take my actual um, crayons so I'm going to move this back a little bit and I'm going to take the crayons and I'm going to take my pale gray actually I'm going to take my dark gray and I'm going to use my brush actually I'll use my water brush to get a looser look and I'm going to take a little bit of this gray and I'm going to dot it Let's move my hand there so you can kind of see I don't want a lot of water in this case but I kind of want to add a little bit of um, darkness and it's um, kind of like a pointillism um, it's just adding an interesting effect and um, I just want to give it a try I liked how it turned out in my in my card and I thought I would uh, might as well show you because it's just it's a neat effect it's different there's no real right or wrong way to do watercoloring and um, you can experiment a lot just to get different looks okay and I'm just going to blend out that there so I'm happy with how she is and I'm going to now cut her out and we'll get back to show you how to do the shading around her okay 
Okay, so I finished cutting her out. Now each of my matryoshkas were painted like this and they were all applied to the background with um, a Stampin' Dimensional. So she's there on a little oval just to give you the example with the Stampin' Dimensional. And what I did for the um, shading around her was first I did the sponging on her on her, the background first and then I applied her with the Stampin' Dimensional and then taking the darker gray from my Neutrals um, watercolor crayons, I just created a little bit of a shadow going this way because of course my light source is coming from this direction going this way and I created a little bit of darkness there for the shadow and then I created a light shadow now of course because of the light shining um, you're not going to see it as well there's already a shadow here that's being produced from my light since it's coming from the left <laughs> and I just kind of went around her uh, with this gray which you'll see better when you don't have light coming from a specific direction all the way around and then again, I, I went back with that pointillism and I just kind of dotted my gray all around her. Now, um, I cannot tell you again why I do it like this. Uh, I have different ways of doing different things. You know, it's just another uh, technique and it just adds such an interesting effect. It's not something you would normally see in most uh, watercoloring with stamping. And uh, it's, it looks just really cool. That's the best I can say, the best reason I can give for doing it like this. So I added that in. And then I just added a little touch of, um, of uh, pink mixed into there. To add a little bit more visual interest. And then back with the water and kind of spread it out a bit. Okay. So that's essentially how each and every one of my matryoshkas was done. I'm going to put a little bit darker over here. If you take a look at my card, you'll see um, how they were all done up like that. Okay. Now for the final part of um, the card, unlike Ange, I don't do the whole card because a lot of the time there's just too many different elements in my cards that take too long. Um, I, do, I do more complicated things sometimes. So I have um, for my flowers, I took these with the die cutter. It's the Floral Fusion Little Sizzlet. And I sponged it with a little bit of pink. And this is like a mouse pad of mine. And it just works really well. I don't want to mess up my pad that comes with um, my uh, paper piercing mat pack. And I take uh, this embossing tool. And I first um, push downwards in like the center areas and on each petal to add a little bit of dimension. Then I flip it over and I push outwards in the petal. I'm breaking down the fiber, softening it up to help it have a little bit of form. Back in the center again. I'm giving it a little bit of shape. And then I have my second flower done over here. Again, in the center, each of the petals. Flip it the other way, each of the petals. And back in the middle again just adding again that dimension and then I'm going to when I put it together I just lay them one over the other like so I'm going to move my mat here okay so I laid the one over the other and you see how it has a little extra dimension and if you want to add more just curl up that center flower a little bit um, before or after you glue it down just to give it that extra lift and make sure that the petals are offset. And with all those elements, you can put together the card. Just go to our website and you'll see the instructions for the card. Thanks a lot and have a great day.